Hey everybody, Matt Seiler here. Recently on the Wood Forums, a couple of guys had asked me to elaborate about my vacuum veneer press. I'm in process with a couple of rocking chairs right now, and I'm using the veneer press to conform some bent laminations around some form work for things like the crest rail as well as uh, the back splats. Follow along with me and I'll elaborate about what I've got and how I use it. Here I've got the basic vacuum veneer system that I purchased from Rockler. Um, it's actually manufactured by the Vacu Press Company, and it's the same place that I've recommended you buy uh, the Unibond 800 glue from. Now the kit, as you purchase it, comes with a bag that's about 49 inches by 49 inches. I happen to have about half of it draped over the back end. I'm only using the front portion of it. It comes with a, uh, a pump and a braided hose. Um, inside the bag, I've got a 2 foot by 4 foot platen as a support surface and this is what um, gives me the uh, suction of the air underneath the piece. Now all the platen is is a uh, piece of MDF that's about three quarters of an inch thick and I've uh, milled eighth inch wide eighth inch deep grooves over at the table saw in a, about a six inch grid pattern and at the intersection of the grid up here towards the front you drill a half inch thick hole through the platen and that's what accepts um, these little tanged, barbed plastic nipples that come with the kit. They give you a few of them. It's basically just a uh, tanged piece of plastic with a flange on the other end. This gets driven up through the bottom surface of the uh, uh, platen, and that's what gives you the ability to align the metal business end of the hose up through the nipple in the bag, through the platen, and that's what gives you your draw force out here on the top surface of the platen. Now the vacuum system is capable of drawing up to about 30 inches of mercury. Um, I've gotten that uh, pretty routinely. A lot of people are under the impression that it's actually the suction of the pump that creates all of the clamping uh, force. That's actually a misnomer. What happens is this pump creates an atmospheric differential. There's a lower atmospheric pressure inside the bag than out here with you and me. And when that happens, what occurs is the weight of the column of air between your feet and outer space presses down on all sides on this bag. And at 30 inches of mercury being drawn, what you end up yielding is a clamping force that nets about 14 pounds per every square inch of surface. You figure two foot by four foot bag times 14 pounds per each inch. That's an awful lot of clamping force. But the benefit to that is it's extremely even and you get a really nice result as a, uh, after you're done. Now, all a vacuum pressing system is, is a clamp. Uh, it's meant to uh, basically squeeze one thing against the other. Now, if you follow that line of reasoning, obviously it's great for veneer work. I do it all the time and you guys have seen me do that on the uh, forums. But it's also great for bending. Um, rather than making both a male and a female bending form, squishing the work between it and keeping it there courtesy of a whole bunch of extremely strong clamps, I can make one half of the bending form, put the work on it, put it in the bag, turn it on, and let the weight of the column of air conform the uh, work to the bending form. The adhesive of choice for this project is a plastic resin glue, and I'm using Unibond 800. What I do is begin by mixing up two parts of the liquid resin and then I'll be adding one part of the dry catalyst. Unibond happens to make three different colors of catalyst, a light, a medium, and a dark. The light blends it with things like maple or birch. The medium is great for woods like oak and the dark is wonderful for woods like bobingo or walnut or something like that. And what you do is simply mix it just like you would brownie batter. Uh, add some of the uh, powdered uh, catalyst to the resin, mix, and then keep going till you're done. Spread out a little bit of the plastic resin glue and then using an ink roller, uh, get a nice even coating. Uh, you want to make sure that you've got 100% coverage and that you've got a nice even um, consistency of uh, your glue layer.
Now I'm able to do three of these back pieces at a time using this form. And what I'm doing is registering the bottom edge um, so that uh, they're all going to be even, so that the, the uh, arcs will be uniform from piece to piece. In order to keep that orientation, I'm going to lay some blue tape across just to keep everything happy. Now it's just a matter of getting everything in the bag. Lining up the bottom edges, I've got an indicator mark, a witness mark um, on the pieces to make sure that the uh, bottom surfaces are going to be aligned. Now all you have to do is put in the supplied um, plastic tube and then chase the exterior piece over and you squish that. Um, start in the middle, pull towards the end. What you want to do is avoid situations where you've got the bag creased or crinkled inside of this. If uh, it's got a crease or a wrinkle in there, uh, that'll let air in. Okay, now we just simply turn the pump on. The vacuum press system is definitely a slow and steady kind of a tool. You're not going to see the air just drop out of the bag. It's going to go uh, at its own relaxed pace. But when this work starts conforming itself to the bag, um, it's actually pretty cool to watch. Because it's only about 50 degrees in the shop right now and the Unibon does not want to cure unless the ambient temperature is somewhere around 70 degrees or higher, I've got to tent it with a packing blanket. I've just got two pieces of off cuts just keeping um, the work elevated and I'm bringing in a small space heater to catch the warm air and direct it over the work. And what I usually will do at that stage is just take a stick and just keep it clamped like that in order to uh, keep the mouth opening. And now what I have is a nice little um, heated arrangement. We've got hot air coming up and being directed over the uh, work. Now it's just simply a matter of waiting about six to eight hours and uh, these three will be done. <laughs>